All right, guys, tell me. What song is that? Jingle bells. Jingle bells, all right. Um, what is that? All right, all right. Um, I try to play on Yes Go Nuts at Christmas, but I don't know what That was secular music, guys. You know, and everybody complains about Christmas has become so secular. Well, this Advent season, we are going to be talking about music. Our main theme is not necessarily going to be any particular song, but this week, as we're looking at the instruments, and as we're looking at, like I said, the, the decorations on the tree, all the, all the notes and the treble clefs, the bass clefs, and all around, even, they want me to use that stand, I forgot to do that. Even the, uh, the lyre stand that's up there, um, that's not a harp, it's a lyre. So uh, even, even that is present because of music. In today's text, especially Isaiah 40, and I apologize when I started reading, reading Psalms, I think I said Isaiah prophesied. Isaiah uh, chapter 40, listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord, make straight highway, make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. Reminds us of a text that we hear about whom? Whom do we hear about the voice in the wilderness? John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist. And it was John the Baptist who was, who was, who was making the way for the coming of the Messiah. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. It was, it was John the Baptist. In Wisconsin, we have two seasons, right? Summer or winter and what? Road construction. And sometimes they don't have much room in between them. How many of you like to, like to drive on I-94 when, when uh, the, the little yellow or orange things are up and the barrels are up and, and you got to drive behind some semis? The, the semis on 94, it's, it's ridiculous. But road construction is there for a reason. And it's not to a aggravate us. Road construction is there because we want our roads to be nice, and, and in, in, in the, the northern part of the country like this, it has a hard time handling the heave and the hoe of the cold and the, and the heat. And so they need lots of, lots of attention. My son Nick was going down to, uh, was driving down to Texas for a class he's going to for the next two weeks, and he, was, he and I were talking, and he said, Dad, I just wanted to take the back roads. I didn't want to take take the, the toll roads. I said, why not? Because I didn't want to pay. I said, well, you know, if you remember in Florida, the toll roads usually are the ones that are really nice. If I wanted to go from Fort Lauderdale, from Miami, all the way up to Orlando, or even up to um, uh, uh, Georgia, I wasn't going to take Highway 95, which is a six-lane monstrosity on one side and six-lane monstrosity on the other. I would take the toll roads. Why? Because they were nice. They were the nicest ones that were available. Yes, you have to pay for them, but they were smooth. They, they, they didn't have a whole lot of turns um, more than you needed. They, they just were a nice ride. In the scripture text, we're being told, 
hey, the king is coming. Clear the path. Get the path. Get those paver stones. Get all those cobblestones. Get all those things you know, nice and smooth. Get the shrubbery up on, along the sides. Nice and looking beautiful because our king is coming. And that's what they used to do. I, I saw something the other day. There was found underneath a McDonald's in Rome, an old Roman road. They had to excavate, excavate down and stuff. But even that old Roman road looked nice. Um, that's what I call a drive through But the thing is, the secular music I was playing today, hmm, you may say, well, Christmas has become so secular. How many of you are listening to Christmas music now? Anybody? All right. Normally, it doesn't come on until the day after Thanksgiving. Normally. But they didn't have Christmas stuff out before Halloween before either. But you listen to the Christmas music. And I don't think there is a season that has, is more defined by music, maybe save uh, um, John Philip Sousa and Lee Greenwood and then for Fourth of July kind of stuff. But there is not another time of the year that is more identified by music. And no, it's not lift up ye gates. And no, it's not about watchers. And no, it's not about you know, some of the other Advent stuff that we're singing. It's people start hearing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. People start hearing some of those songs. And what we need to understand is those songs should be our cry to say, hey, guess what, world? Our king is coming. Those songs, that music, should be an a, 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 uh, impetus for us to say, I got to make I got to make the road clear in my own life. I got to smooth out the rough spots. I've got to, I've got to um, uh, take care of the inner self. Got to take care of what's going on inside of me. And we should be yelling when Christmas music comes on. We should be yelling, hey, it's Christmas time, guys. It's Christmas time. Do you know what that means? Even the, 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 the old saying, Jesus is the reason for the season, seems to have dissipated somewhere along the line. I don't even hear that anymore. Jesus is the reason for the season. Well, guess what? God's been taken out of a lot of stuff. This morning I saw this really neat picture, and I wanted to share it, but I couldn't figure out how, because it wasn't a share button. It was um, Winnie the Pooh and his friends around a tree. There's a star. And it said, my only Christmas wish is that our country would go back to God, would return to God. We've gotten rid of God in a lot of things. God has been taken out of so much. We can't take God out of Christmas, guys. Because without God, without Christ... It's nothing but a bunch of snowmen. It's nothing but a bunch of stockings. You see, prepare the royal highway in our lives. Make, make flat the ground. Make, make everything good. Take care of ourselves and make sure through Advent that those things are laid out. And the music of our hearts will bring us right here. The pathway will go all the way from here up to the manger. where that itty-bitty baby will be born. Quite honestly, Jesus was born a long time ago. Jesus raised from the dead a long time ago. Jesus was ascended a long time ago. But we celebrate it. It means something to us that we come with anticipation. We come with excitement. 
We come knowing that without that little baby boy, without Christmas Eve, there would be no Palm Sunday. Without Christmas Day, there would be no Monday, Thursday. Without Christmas time, there would be no Good Friday. And without Good Friday, there would be no what? No Easter. It's all together. Last year I talked about, let's not take a look at Advent through Christmas and then look at Lent through Easter, through Ascension. It's all one season. It's all one narrative of what this little itty bitty baby did for us. Actually, it's about what God did for us. God said, you need to go down and become a man. Like, like, pre, pre, like um, uh, Pastor Luke was preaching on Sunday. He emptied himself and came down and was a born, born in that barn for you and for me. He came into a messy world. And so we need to make sure that we do what we're talking about. Make straight the road. I'm going to go back to this psalm text. Because if somebody comes up to you and says, Who is the king of glory? What are you going to say? Open up the gates. Open up the ancient doors. Let the king of glory enter in. Well, who is the king of glory? People would ask, could ask you. What's your answer? The Lord is strong. The Lord is mighty. The Lord is invincible in battle. So open up the ancient gates. Open up the ancient doors and let the king of glory enter in. Guys, who is the king of glory? I don't know who it is. The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. And so as you hear music... That you say, that's just secular music. It's, you know, it's nothing, nothing that um, is theologically correct, which, you know what? I like Christmas music a lot. Ask my wife, right, honey? Yes, she says, oh, yes. I found this great station on Sirius XM called uh, Christmas Spirit. And it has, it has um, Christian musicians singing some of the old Christian, cla uh, all, old classic music and, and the things that you would hear Bing Crosby, but it was a certain twist. And so find that music. Take that opportunity to say, you know what? That music is calling me. Calling me to know that the season is on its way. We are only in Advent, yes, but we know that Christmas is coming. And so rather than Rather than sit idly by and listen to, listen to Bing Crosby or whomever, take all of it as a heed to self-check your highway, self-check your road, and make sure through this Advent season and the music of Advent to make sure that you are prepared for the coming of your King. May God... Grant that for us. Amen.